and that pump switch is still engaged on this panel, and that pump switch on there isn't a pump and roll, but stationary pump, that's when you can tear apart something. Now there are safeties on board the truck that will lock things out, but I never want to take the chance on it. Larry told me that there's a, uh, the, the guy who invented all this stuff told me that there's a certain procedure, follow the procedure, and that way everybody's on the same brick. I don't experiment with a truck, I just flat out run it the way he told me to run it. Um, so on that switch, that pump roll switch, has got to be up the stationary pump mode. And then when you step out of the truck, you have trucks on idle. Um, when you get out of the truck, you want to make sure the truck's on idle. And then you can switch pump on. So this is a pump switch, it's a dual switch. So when you hit this, you get the fire pump on and the vent opens. You get two green lights. From there, you go to um, tank to pump. So you want to get water um, down into this pump and you're switching that toggle switch up. So it's a momentary switch, but once you hit it, you keep your hand on it like that, press it up, it opens the valve. It opens the valve. It is not a detent switch, it is a momentary switch. So you, you push up on it and that opens the valve electronically. When the valve opens up, now you're getting water in the pump. You can, if you want to, use the, just tap it and you can get uh, uh, the air out of the pump and it'll help draw water into the pump itself. Once that's so do you out, have to, I'm sorry, the first toggle switch, do you have to hold it up until you hear something? Like, how do you know? Or... Um, well, you can watch your compound gauges, but you'll, you'll see that and this will go to green. Okay. So you'll have three green lights on this thing when you're ready to go. If you don't have a green light here, um, or if this, you know, it's going to be closed, I, I don't know if there's an in-between. I've never tested it um, to see if there's an in-between. But I know momentarily, you, like anything, when you hold this, the thing's winding, winding, winding gets to a certain point, there's a switch that it meets when it's full up, full wide open. That causes this light to turn green, okay? Um, where else? So now we've got water into the pump. We want to make sure that we don't get distracted, walk away, start hunting tools. We want to make sure we're pulling, unlocking. So there's lock, that's locked, that's unlocked. When it's unlocked, Pull it out. There's a white line right here. That is a research tank fill. So you're getting it by those bearings on the pump so the pump doesn't burn its bearings out. So you always want to make sure this is pulled. Now wait a minute. Although it's labeled tank, tank fill, fill yep. you want to open that so that you put water in the pump? So you're circulating water. Okay, so now you're talking about circulating the water right. so that the pump doesn't overheat. Right. Okay. Let's go back for a minute yep. and let's turn off the tank fill. Okay, so. Now, so you put, put it in and lock it. Now, in that mode, we've opened the water. Yep. We've got water in the pump. So the next step would be to select your hose line and your outlet. You can if you want to. Well, you're gonna, you, you, the idea is you wanna get water out of the vehicle. Right, but that's not, that's not my point. Um, my point is to protect the pump at all times. So no matter what weather you're in, no matter what you're doing, you're pulling this puppy out. Just pull it out to the white line, leave it, lock it. This way, if you shut down a line and you walk away and do something, you're protecting the pump at all times. No matter where you are, idle, uh, whether you're at idle or you're at 1,450 RPMs. So I, I recommend that you always pull this out. Um, on Doc's truck, I don't know if that's the same way. What's that? You you are always pulling this when you sh when you're at stationary, but your pumps on. No, we just it depends on the, the, what Circulate. we're doing. But I just tr I tr I go to uh, circulate tank okay. tank fill and uh, tank to pump when I want to cool my pump. But I don't do it all the time. Right. Darley recommends that it has, according to Larry, recommends that this is always up when you're in pump mode. So that's what I do. So this kind of setup is the same thing you do when you're on pump and roll, believe it or not. If you're hauling ass out of here and, and, and there's a fire along the roadway and you, you can open up that front, front bumper, this is exactly, you're doing the same thing. Pump, don't pump. The only thing you, you're gonna do is the switch in there is gonna go to pump and roll. So I digress. Let's go back to pumping. So now, this is a standard pump. It's operated by RPMs. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a standard thousand gallon a minute pump. 
It'll operate all three of these lines plus the front turret. And you can get up there in the front turret, get that thing lit up as a, um, as a uh, regular turret uh, hitting something that's you need high volume on. That thing will throw out 300 gallons a minute. Probably a little bit more because as you, you roll, roll this up to 1450, it says it's 300 um, gallons a minute on that front nozzle. It goes 125, 175, 250, and I think 300, or 225 and 300. So there's a, I'll show you that in a minute, there's a little thing on the front you can adjust for that nozzle depending on what flow you want. So once you're at this point, now you're able to deliver water, you've got a whole number of discharges here. Um, so let's run over some of the controls on it. You have your primer, and this is one of those non-oil primers. This is the Trident um, primer that's air, that has an air venturi, and that's what takes the air out of the uh, pump. Does a very good job. You can keep this on all day long. It's not going to damage it. On our old primer pumps that had the oil, you run out of oil, you're jeopardi jeopardizing the gearing in it, but uh, we don't have to worry about that on these. Uh, this is your standard throttle. This just has engine controls, temperatures, whatnot on it. Um, I think we do have some uh, um, presets and whatnot on it. I have not put any presets on it. You can scroll. This does not come with presets, so I'm wrong on that. So you can scroll up and down on, on, on certain things here. Uh, but this, this generally will bring up your RPMs right here. Uh, it, it only goes up to about 1,450 RPMs on the truck, and that's it. You're pumping 1,000 gallons, probably a little bit more than 1,000 gallons. I have not tested it to see if you know what the flow is out of everything we have lit up. But it does pump. It pumps really well. We had all the hoses out. Some of the discharge opened up. It was really handling it well, and that was sucking it from the pond up the road here, um, also using it out of the tank. So you have your standard um, locking um, uh, valve uh, handles, and they have one, two, three uh, crosslays. We have a front bumper turret, and that's it. So let's go down a little bit further. Traditional pump. We've got a major, a large uh, LDH intake, plus we have an auxiliary intake, um, and these are your um, for the main pump intake driver side and passenger side. They're toggle switches. They're just like this switch here. It's a momentary switch. You flip that up and hold it until the light goes green. You want to close it, light goes red. Hold it down until that light's red, the valve's closed. This bad boy down here, um, there's your discharge um, PRV. So when you are, if you get like somebody shuts down the hose, this thing's set at 150, you can, you can definitely operate it and, and bring that up if you want. I'm leaving it at 150 PSI. Uh, I think that's about pretty safe. The only time I'd probably move that up is if I had to pump uphill with one line going uphill and somebody shut the line down. That's what this is for. And what it is, is it's a, it's a valve release inside the pump. It doesn't just discharge the ground, it discharges inside the pump. So it's like a capacitor kind of, it, it discharges that pressure inside the pump, won't damage it. So I leave that this way. We have a number of vents around the truck. I'll run over the vents because the vents are critical or whatever, how, whatever direction you're going. Um, but so far, if you're gonna just feed, I guess Lee wanted me to go over nursing with this truck on another vehicle. So I explain how to get this pump all started up. Uh, interior switch on stationary, boom, boom, pull this out, lock it in. When you attach a line, you know, if you're gonna take it from here, which we normally do if we're gonna nurse, we're gonna pull this two and a half or a three or a, a four inch door, it's normally going to a, another engine. Slap it right on here, get yourself set up with the other vehicle, um, pull your discharge, uh, for it and uh, adjust accordingly. Um, you're, you're already set up with water flowing in from the tank and it should handle the volume you want to pull out at, at whatever price it'll, it'll feed a truck. Um, I'm not pro nursing all the time. If we have small fires, that's one thing where you could pro nurse because this thing's a tanker. 
we want this thing lit up on the road fetching water. That's the main goal behind it. We all know that. But it's so tempting to stop, throw a hose line out. Many fire companies do it. Well, one of the problems is in the wintertime, you can't put that tank out. Cold weather. Yeah. Everything like that. yeah. That's the times when we could, the old tanker. Yeah. All we could do was to have the vacuum pump yeah. in pressure to fill them in the bumper. That didn't work that well. That's the only way we get it out. That's a good. It's a good point because he he brings up a valid point that Larry <coughs> told me that I didn't realize. But when you run this thing, you always want to run it at high at the highest RPM setting when you're in vacuum mode. Um, you want to discharge if you can under pressure with that thing cranked up to 1450 psi or RPMs. And the reason being is that hose up there, right there, gets. Um, air flowing back and forth in freezing temperatures, that air can freeze the water that's in there and it forms a block. And you don't want that freezing up. When you run it at higher RPMs, the, the water, the vapor is heated a little bit more and it, it's, it's better off for the, the whole process of vacuuming to make sure that thing is, is uh, heated. And by doing that, you're running at 1,450 PSI. There's safety controls on the truck for both this pump and this, the vacuum system that weren't on the old 321. And now um, I get a little paranoid because I was asking Larry, you know, what happens if I get sub-zero temperatures with this thing, are my safeties going to work? And he, he seemed to think that they wouldn't work. So by that, overpressurizing. So let's go, is, does anybody have any questions on the pump side? Nobody? Because we'll, we're going to go around and I'll show you a little bit more inside the truck and, and what else has to go on. When you come in to grab the truck, um, the first thing I always talk, tell Chad is, first thing he sees me do is a walk around the truck. Don't know if anybody put bottles on it, there's a wood jammed underneath it, what's going on? But I always do a safety walk around. The first thing I look at are these things right here. Um, all these suction vents, there's numerous ones all over the place. These two different things. This is for, this is for your pump. There's a number of them around. There's one right here. There's the main tank drain. These all have to be off. Um, you want these all shut down and closed. Somebody may come in and, you know, putz around with this thing and turn one of these like that. And then when you go to draft or you go to supply water or whatever, you're taking in water, you're like, what's going on with my compound gauges? Why am I so low here? And you got a suction valve open. So same thing as here with the hose vent. This is... This is for this particular hose. It vents from this valve, this section out, it'll drain it. You have to take the cap off? Uh, I don't think you do. I think it drains from the inside. Once that's open to air, something will it, 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 it probably would help. Because any air getting in there, if this is that closed off, this may be a slower drain. So you might probably won't want to open one side or the other. Uh, there's three of these around um, each one of these uh, valve or one uh, six inch outlets. So you want to make sure these are all close. When I go around, before I take this truck out, I'm looking at these when I go around the truck. There's a couple more on the other side. They're lower for the pump. You want to make sure those are off as well. So in freezing weather, we all know on all the engines, you want to make sure this thing goes out of here without any water in it. Can you store it with that? Pressure relief valve closed. Yeah, um, it it is off. It's always off. Always off. Yeah. If I'm if I'm in a if I'm in a uh, position where I have to pump up, you know, pump to anybody, or I'm receiving water from another engine, as I said before, I might turn that on. I most likely will turn that on. If I have to bring it up, I'll adjust it on the regulator and just bring it up. Hey, Chief. So, we've got a number of uh, we've got a number of uh, different drains and stuff through the system. So you want to make sure these are all all these drains are closed uh, around the truck and on the other side on the bottom. We'll walk around the other side. So as I said, there's two. There's basically two different systems. You have a vacuum tanker. You have a regular engine here, a thousand gallon per minute engine. Nothing, 
nothing weird about it. You see those New York City trucks that got that have ten of these gauges and all these things on it and all the compound gauge. This is a very simple truck to run. So vacuum side of it. This thing will suck water out of, as you probably all know, this thing will suck water out of two or three inch uh, pots. If you've got water and you've got to get it, this thing will suck it. it just, all it does is just suck stuff right up that hose. Um, I've had it in streams as deep as four inches. I've had the old 321 in streams as deep as four inches. And I was able to fill quicker than any other draft truck there. And get that thing unhooked and away I went. And I did it all on my own. So this could be a single operator, but if you have to lay your own hose down and get it into a pond or whatever, you're gonna be sweating if you're rushing. Uh, I got four lengths of, um, so I think they're 12 foot lengths of uh, hose or 10 foot. So we got, oh no, I think it's 48 feet. I've got 48 feet of six inch. You could put 180 feet of hose on this thing and it's going to take every time you add lengths and you're that much further it's going to take that much more time but this truck will suck it so if you're at a pond that's 100 Ooh. yards away you can lay as much hose down as you can it'll bring that water to that tank but it'll do so much slower than it would the closer you are the better less hose length the better do you have to worry about the height um there is a height restriction i think it's 20 feet 25 to 30 feet not tested. I don't know. I've I've never done it from a bridge. I've seen it. I've seen this truck and videos done from a bridge at 30 foot. <coughs> Brings the water right up in the tank. It takes a little longer, but it definitely does. It's, it, it's a it's a sucking machine. You could test it on straight to corner road. Yeah. There's a police here. Back in the back for whoever. If you have a, if you you happen to be. Look, we all know we're low crew now in most of our vehicles, and the first guy out with the truck may be the first first one or two people there on scene that has to drag a hose off and hit it from this truck, or you're using the front bumper. Whichever, there's a pack back there for you. If the scene's really bad where you're at, um, maybe the driver has to use it. Pack's there for you. It's always charged. 20 to 25 feet. 20 to 25 feet. Thank you, Doc. Um, uh, what else? So if we walk around the other side, it's a little bit different of a, a thing on the other side. So let's check that out. But I want to go to the front bumper turret. If you look at this, the gauge. gallons a minute will last us 10 almost 10 minutes it lasts at least more than 10 minutes we, uh, me and i tested it out several times and it really did a great job at about 25 you're probably looking at 15 18 minutes um i think we timed it out in about 18 minutes to 20 minutes so this has a lot of potential for single person setting up before your engine gets there to cool things down whether it's a truck on fire car on fire and you can't get to a hose line because you're, you're doing something else, that could be the next best friend. So uh, I'm not afraid to take this thing out first thing and, and get going with it. It's not a um, first in class A pumper, but um, it can do a lot of things uh, very well. And the out south side's done it, what, three, four times now? They've laid this thing out and it's knocked things right down one before you even got a hose off the truck, this front the turret. However, Given its weight, 57,000, six, almost 60,000 pounds, you'll bury it pretty quick in muck. So I would recommend taking it a hot road for any point. Uh, and on this side, it's just basic. Uh, same thing on the other side. We do have uh, the tank uh, bracket uh, lowering and uh, raising place here. And then we've got the other side. On the other side, there's a hatch on the, on, the, on the panel. In winter, there's some special devices. So um, I didn't show you that. I, I meant to while we're over there, but you might as well see it. I'm sure you've all seen it. And as soon as you start the truck, you're automatically getting radiator heat um, into the uh, pump compartment here. And we also have pump house lights. 
So they're always on. Summer, shut them all down. Spring, they can come right down. Got a, a couple hundred feet of uh, three inch upstairs. And this little bucket here. Uh, that'll come in a wicked handy every now and then if you need to deploy it. So in the cab, uh, a couple of you guys can hop up in the cab and take a good look. Uh, if somebody wants to get on the other side, I don't know what I got in there. Yeah, nothing. I'll start. Your battery uh, is right here. And then your ignition switch. Just like on Doc's truck, when you turn that, you go two, two clicks over on your ignition switch. You don't turn the truck over yet. You watch your gauges. They'll go up all the way and then come all the way back.